So just in case you think your video might be glitching or you might be seeing things incorrectly, you're not. Yes, there is no uh, temple on this side of my glasses. It busted off last weekend. Uh, my new glasses should be in any day now. I was overdue for an eye exam anyway, and they couldn't reframe these lenses. Uh, but yes, it's uh, been interesting with uh, having these, making do with these glasses kind of teeter-tottering with just the one uh, temple. It's been an interesting week, let's put it that way. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really, really appreciate it. So, yes, it's been almost two months, again. Uh, I, I swear I'm trying not to make the gap between each video successively longer. I'm, I'm not trying to phase this uh, channel out of existence, honest to, go honest to goodness. It's just been working, working out that way. It's been a very interesting couple of months. Um, I've got excuses for not being here for two months. Uh, well, some excuses, some actual reasons. Uh, last weekend, I went down to um, Medford to uh, meet up with my aunt and uncle. They live down in the Klamath Falls area. We get together once or twice a year. Uh, I missed out on last year's get-together uh, for reasons I won't go into. Uh, so yeah, that was last weekend, and it was also the day after we got back is when my glasses broke. Yay. And my shaver broke the same day. The same morning. Yeah. Within 15 minutes of waking up, getting out of bed. That was my Monday last Monday. So uh, yeah. And uh, then, you know, all myriad of household and life stuff has been going on pretty much. There were a couple of weekends the last two months where I just did not feel good. I had stomach issues and stuff, and I uh, just didn't feel like doing a video. There were other weekends when oh, oh, uh, we recently had a little ant infestation in my bathroom, so we had to take care of that. And uh, again, yeah, just all sorts of stuff. And there were a couple of weekends, of course, where I just didn't feel like doing a video. Uh, you know, after a week of work, you know, you, sometimes you just want to kick back and, uh, and waste away the weekend for, for no good reason. Uh, but anyway... Here I am, back again. Uh, I was going to do this video, needless to say, about a month ago, because we are already halfway through 2024. Well, we're a month more than halfway through 2024 now. It's just weird that the uh, the years just go by faster and faster, it seems. Uh, but there is a reason for that, if you think about it. The longer you've been around, the shorter percentage of your life each year has become. If you, if you can understand my math. So, you know, that's why every year seems to go by faster. So, it made complete sense when I was told that. But anyway, uh, yes, halfway through the year, so I thought I would talk about the stuff I've been listening to the first half of 2024 that has uh, kind of stuck with me that I've, I've really been enjoying, uh, both old stuff and new stuff. The first list will be my, the old stuff, and it's, it's about 10 items long. Well, 10 artists long. There's more than 10 CDs here. And the list of new stuff, uh, stuff newly released in 2024 that I've been listening to, that's just, f uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's just five items. Uh, that's, you know, just all I, all I really felt like uh, including in this list for now. And uh, neither of these lists is in any particular order. Oh, by the way, you'll notice, um, yes, a, a hopefully an improvement in my channel. I thought I would try an external microphone. Uh, no reason why particularly that I'm not using the microphone on my tablet. It works just fine, but I thought maybe just to give it a try, see how it works, if the sound happens to be any better. But anyway, yes, uh, let's go ahead and get started with this list. Uh, first of all, as I said, the longer list, which is uh, old stuff, you know, uh, catalog recordings, classic stuff that I just happened to have discovered this year and have been really enjoying. Uh, first off, I found this, I think, at Epic Seconds. Uh, this is Julie Andrews and Carol Burnett. This, these, this is, these are, this is, the audio recordings of two TV specials that they did back in the 60s. Uh, a two-disc set, one disc devoted to each of the specials. They, this, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I love Carol Burnett. She's one of my favorite uh, female entertainers of all time. And of course, Julie Andrews, her voice is just absolutely gorgeous. So uh, the two of them together, it kind of a, uh, an odd couple, you would think. And in a way it is, but uh, they do both seem to have a knack for um, 
well, they both they both sing well, and they both kind of do comedy pretty well. Uh, and their, their chemistry, it's not the best chemistry, chemistry I've see, ever seen between two performers, but it's good. And it was a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, next one is another another a f female artist or female band. There's actually quite a few female artists in this uh, list here. Uh, next one is the Dixie Cups. This is a classic um, female close harmony group. Well, actually, I don't know if they're uh, technically classified as a close harmony group or not. Uh, from the 40s and 50s, uh, they are very most famous for Chapel of Love. That is one of their big hit songs, as well as Iko Iko, the... Uh, I guess it was a, a uh, Cajun folk song or, you know, a, a New Orleans, Louisiana folk song that was made into a popular hit single. But uh, yes, this is their complete, uh, the complete, the complete Redbird recordings. This was released on the Varez Sarabande label. Wonderful stuff. I found this, I think, at House of Records. And uh, I had the, the LP that they did on the Redbird label that had Chapel of, I think, I think it was called Chapel of Love. Uh, it had the title track and stuff on it, but uh, when I saw this, I had to upgrade to that. And uh, then we have a classic artist. Uh, I, I love this guy. I've loved everything I've listened to of his, Tony Bennett. And this is an album called The Playground. And I don't think my sister ever had this, but she would have absolutely adored this. Uh, this is one of those albums where I can just feel my sister sitting beside me and enjoying this with a great big smile, uh, you know, even though she's not really, she's not here to do so. I can just feel her right sitting right beside me, uh, and yes, it's got a bunch of classic pop songs. And of course, uh, this was released on the Sony Wonder label, which is a label, a, a an imprint of Sony uh, Music that uh, specializes in uh, kid friendly recordings. I've got several of their uh, albums, and this was just one that I was happy to add to the list. I had to pick it up as soon as as I saw it because I knew uh, that. It would make me think of my sister. It's an album I know she would have loved. But uh, yeah, you can see all sorts of uh, the various songs that are on here. And they have special guests here like uh, let's, uh, Rosie O'Donnell is on here. And uh, Elmo from Sesame Street is on here as well. Kermit the Frog. My sister loved the Muppets and especially Kermit the Frog. Uh, Being Green is one of the best songs ever. Um, the Inchworm. I really enjoy that song. I can't remember where I heard it first, but I loved it. And uh, Accentuate the Positive, that's one of my favorite uh, Great American Songbook songs. And uh, Swinging on a Star, I also loved that one. I thought we, I thought there was, maybe it's not on here. I thought uh, The Rainbow Connection was on here, but I guess it's not. Uh, it's Only a Paper Moon, that's a beautiful, beautiful song. The Bare Necessities from uh, The Jungle Book is on here as well. So lots and lots and lots of fun, this album. Loved it. And uh, then we have, now this is an artist uh, you probably have never heard of before. Her name is Cecilia Noel, and she is, I believe, the wife of Colin Hay, who was the front man for Men at Work and has uh, had a, hmm, don't know if it would necessarily be considered a prosperous solo career, but he has had a solo career ever since Men at Work uh, disbanded, and he's been making albums ever since then. But yes, I believe Cecilia Noel is his wife. And this is uh, an album of classic rock and pop songs that are covered in, as the title suggests, Cuban, uh, a Cuban style of music. Very interesting to listen to. Uh, you Shook Me All Night Long, the ACDC hit, uh, Jump, the song by Van Halen, uh, Cars, which is the, uh, is it Gary Newman, the, uh, car, the, the, his hit song from the 80s, uh, The Boys Are Back in Town, Don't Stop Me Now, the Queen hit, um, Relax, the Frankie Goes to Hollywood, song. Uh, and then she, of course, covers one of her hubby's songs, Who Can It Be Now? The Men at Work classic. Whip It by Devo. Uh, and Let, Let's Dance by David Bowie. So yeah, lots. I've, I've named almost the entire track listing, but uh, yes, lots of fun, this album. This was actually in the $1 section at House of Records. And as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, Cecilia Noel. Yeah, she had something to do with Colin Hay. So picked it up. And it, it is on uh, Colin Hay's um, Actually, I don't think that's Colin Hayes' label, but uh, Compass Records, which put out several of Colin Hayes' albums back in around the same time period. So yes, lots of fun, that one. Then we have one that, uh, this was one of the newer editions. I just picked it up oh, about a month ago. Uh, it is a instrumental rock band, I guess is basically what you would call it. 
called Gamelon, and this is their sophomore album, I believe, uh, Aerial View. Very, uh, lots of fun. I enjoy this one a lot. Uh, I like, you know, Joe Satriani. If you like Satriani or maybe Steve Vai, you'll like this. This was from the 80s, 90s, uh, 1990. Or, yeah, 1990. The reason why I'm uh, getting new glasses. <laughs> yes, my my distance prescription is unchanged, but my close up, my reading prescription, did change. So uh, yes, it'll be nice to have new glasses next week. Uh, maybe in the next video, you see, I'll have new glasses on. But yeah, this is lots of fun. I'm uh, thinking about uh, looking for their other albums as well. This was uh, yeah. Don't know if there's there's not really a whole lot else to say about it, but yeah, just lots of fun. Great instrumental rock. And this one. I picked this one up at Barnes and Noble. I was just, you know, was just in the mood, <clears throat> excuse me, was in the mood to do a little splurging. And so, yes, this is the three disc version of Physical by Olivia Newton John. Yes, two CDs and a DVD. And this yes, got lots of stuff on it. Um, where is the, oh yeah, yes, I was right, two CDs and a DVD. So, yeah, you can kind of see the uh, track listings on here. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the album. It's probably my favorite Olivia Newton-John album, but uh, they just happened to put as um, extra tracks on here two of my favorite Olivia Newton-John singles uh, that were not of the, not from this album, uh, Heart Attack and Twist of Fate. So it's kind of like when I looked at the track listing for this one, it was just kind of screaming for me to pick it up. So yeah, it cost me 28 bucks, but for two CDs and a DVD, I think it was worth it. And yes, the, the DVD is the physical video album, which I guess is all the music videos for all the singles and probably some extra content as well, as well as Olivia in, New, in, uh, Olivia in Concert in Ogden, Utah at Weber State University Hall, October of 1982. So have not watched the DVD yet. I need to do that at some point. Uh, now these next, these next several, the rest of the artists on this list, I've got more than one CD of. So uh, get through these fairly quickly so the video doesn't take too long. Uh, Rob Wasserman. Uh, this one, I believe, was at House of Records, and this is a duets album. And as you can see uh, by the cover, he does duets with Aaron Neville, Ricky V. Jones, Bobby McFerrin, Lou Reed, Jennifer Warnes, Dan Hicks, Cheryl Benteen, and Stefan Grappelli. So yeah, lots of fun stuff on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, one for My Baby and One More for the Road. It's a classic... Uh, American Songbook Standard, Stardust, another great classic song, Over the Rainbow, and Autumn Leaves, as well as other songs. And there's, you can see the track listing there. Lots of fun that, with that one. And at the same time, uh, about the same time, well, I had seen that one at House of Records several times, kept uh, hesitating to pull the trigger until I saw this one at Epic Seconds. This is Rob, Rob Wasserman's Trios album. So yes, he, he did a solo album, and then, then duets, and then trios. So kind of made kind of a, a, tr a trilogy, I guess you'd say. But yes, um, as you could probably do the math, there are twice as many guest artists on this album as on duets. Brian and Carney Wilson, uh, Neil Young, Bob Weir, Bruce Hornsby, Branford Marsalis, Edie Brickell. I, I really like Edie Brickell, so that was a good one. Jerry Garcia, uh, Elvis Costello, Mark Rebo, uh, Les Claypool. Chris Whitley. So yeah, lots of, uh, again, lots of talent on this album as well as on duets. So I figured I had to pick both of them up and have a little uh, matching set there. So lots of fun with that one, with, with both of those. And then we have, we're moving into some uh, nice thick gooey cheese right here. The Brady Bunch. Yes, what can I say? Um, I watch... Uh, Steven Schnee, the CD junkie, he's got a YouTube channel, and at one point he was talking about the Brady Bunch uh, studio albums, and it was a few weeks later where I saw this one and the next one I'm going to show you at House of Records, so I decided I had to pick him up. This is the Brady Bunch's first album, uh, and it is actually the Brady kids uh, doing the actual singing, for better or worse. They're okay. And yes, this first album, uh, it has, uh, let's see, uh, oh, Time to Change, that was a song that was featured on the show, you know, written into the show. And I thought there was another one. Oh, We Can Make the World a Whole Lot Brighter. That was another one that was written into the show. And it's got a bunch of uh, other 
uh, classic pop songs, you know, covers of pop songs of the day, American Pie and uh, Baby I'm a Want You by Bread. That one's, you know, to hear teenagers singing that song, it's a little, can, it can be a little bit dicey, but hey, what the heck. Uh, it's fun. It's not meant to be, you know, weird in that way. You know, it's, just, it's just plain old fun, you know. So, uh, yeah, lots of fun on, uh, had a lot of fun listening to that one. And then their follow-up album, The Kids from the Brady Bunch. Uh, this one was just as enjoyable. They put out two other albums uh, besides these two. So, uh, and yes, this one has, of course, probably their biggest hit, It's a Sunshine Day, as well as Keep On. Um, and what else? Oh, Candy, Sugar Shop. Uh, Saturday in the Park, the Chicago hit. And uh, so, yeah, what can I say? Those were just, just lots of fun. I grew up on Brady Bunch reruns uh, back in the 80s, so I'm kind of, you know, my, my, my DNA is sort of attached to the show. I've actually got over on my DVD shelf the complete series of the Brady Bunch. I found it for $15. What can I say? And I've kind of been slowly working my way through it. Anyway, uh, let's get to the last two artists in this uh, uh, first list here. Uh, you might have seen me uh, show these in a thrift store haul a few months back. Ilona Knopfler. She is actually no relation to Mark Knopfler. Uh, she is actually, I believe, French. She, she's from France, but these albums are mostly sung in English. Um, and I picked picked up her first two albums. Um, they had them both at the same thrift store. I had never heard of her before. I decided to just take a chance. When they're 99 cents, why not take a chance on them? But yes, uh, excellent voice on her. She's got a great, great voice. And uh, this one she does almost entirely... Uh, this one, Some Kind of Wonderful, I believe this was her debut. She does almost entirely covers. Uh, Some Kind of Wonderful, which was a... Uh, I know that uh, Grand Funk Railroad did it. I think somebody else did it before them. Uh, it's the time of the season, the Zombies song. Uh, Breaking Up is Hard to Do, the Paul Anka hit. Uh, one, which I believe was the Three Dog Night song. Moon Dance, the... Um, what's his name? Come on, Tom. You can remember his name. Uh, Van Morrison. There you go. See? Thanks. And uh, Alfie, the Back Rack David song. Uh, don't let me be mis don't let me be misunderstood, and he's not there, and uh, yeah, several other songs on here as well. Very enjoyable. If you get a chance to check her music out, I recommend it highly. And then her sophomore album, "Live the Life," and uh, equally a great collection of songs on here. She does a couple of songs in French in her native language. Actually, several songs, just about half the track list is in French. So, uh, and I have a, uh, an affinity for French language pop. So, uh, good, good stuff. Now my, for my final artist, actually, let me get a drink real quick. That's not in the ideal place. I got to rethink the positioning of the, uh, water glass for when I'm doing videos. Anyway, uh, this last artist comes with a little bit of a story. Uh, when I was doing my great big CD purge a few months ago, this guy, I just put this guy right on the chopping block. I decided, okay, okay I haven't listened to this album in forever. Put it on there, uh, you know, put it in this uh, cast-offs pile. And I had, I used to have his sophomore album, but at the time I did the purge, I had just only had his first album. And I was at House of Records. Sorry, I bumped the camera. I was at House of Records uh, less than a week later, and I happened to see down in their $1 section his sophomore album. Uh, it wasn't my copy of it. It was uh, much more, uh, in much worse for wear than I would have left my CDs. So I figured, okay, that's a sign. So I decided to go ahead and buy that one for a dollar. Thankfully, I hadn't got ri gotten rid of my cast-offs yet. So I listened to that one as well as his first, and I decided, okay, I I was being premature, so I decided to go ahead and keep keep the first one and the second one. Uh, his name is Newton Faulkner. Uh, yeah, he's kind of a folk pop artist. Uh, I haven't listened to a lot of Jack Johnson, but uh, I would 
from what I've heard of him, he, this guy kind of reminds me of Jack Johnson. He's kind of similar, or Jack Johnson reminds me of him, actually. So, yes, lots of uh, just great catchy melodies, catchy hooks, great lyrics and stuff. Uh, I really enjoy this guy. Um, give him a shot if you haven't yet. Lots of fun. And that was his first album, the one that I almost got rid of. And it is actually... I had forgotten this. I hadn't listened to this in so long. This is the Japanese version. So, uh, yeah. glad I'm glad I kept this one. And this is the one that was at House of Records in the Bargain Bin. His sophomore album, uh, Rebuilt by Humans. Yes, his first album was called Hand Built by Robots and Rebuilt by Humans. Another great set of songs on here. Uh, I could even begin to, to narrow the list down to my favorites. There's just so many of them are so good. And I didn't stop there. Since then, in uh, like within the next three weeks, I'd actually uh, found online and bought his third and fourth albums. Yes, here we have Write It On Your Skin. This is his third album, and it's, uh, just as just as good as his first two. Uh, really enjoyed that one. And his fourth album is called Studio Zoo. I had never had this one before. I think at uh, I had picked up his um, Write It On Your Skin for whatever reason. I just didn't care much for it and got rid of it fairly soon after. Uh, I guess I guess that this is one of those things where, you know, I your tastes change. You know, I wasn't as much into him back then as I am now. You know, now I just can't get enough of the guy. Uh, as you can see, I've got four of his albums. Uh, so yeah, lots of fun, this guy. Um, excellent, excellent musician. Check him out. He has made uh, two or three more albums since then. I haven't gotten any of them, at least not yet. But uh, yes, excellent, excellent artist. Uh, Newton Faulkner. Okay, now on to the second and final list for today's video. This list is going to be much shorter. Uh, it's only five items long, and I'll probably just be going through it quite a bit faster, because there's not quite as many stories with these as there were with the uh, other list. And I don't know if these are necessarily my five top favorite new releases this year so far, for the first half of the year, uh, but they are definitely five of my favorite new releases so far for the year 2024. Again, uh, this list and the other one also in no particular order. Uh, so let's just go ahead and check them out. Um, I recommend, highly recommend all these uh, albums. Needless to say, they're in my favorites of the year. Uh, Liz Wright. Uh, she is, uh, I've loved her ever since her debut album, Salt, was in my sister's CD collection, which I inherited from her. And that's how I discovered Liz Wright. And I've got four, her first four albums. I've, there are a couple between those two and this one that I don't have. This is like her sixth or seventh album, uh, and she is just in top form. Fantastic uh, soul jazz vocalist. Um, I don't know what to say, but just the songs are just exquisite on here. And all the more coincidental, I guess you'd say, uh, the first track on here also features Angelique Kijo, who is another favorite um Afri well, not African-American, because Angelique Kijo is not American, but uh, um, Artists of African Heritage. That's how I'll put it, uh, uh, that I've ever heard. So yes, and uh, Michelle Ndege Ocello also appears on here. But uh, yes, the, the title track, Sparrow, is the, title, the track featuring Angelique Kijo. And let's see. No More Will I Run is an excellent song. Uh, Sweet Feeling and Root of Mercy is excellent. Uh, Who Knows Where the Time Goes, fantastic song. Uh, a couple of her previous albums uh, delved a little bit into gospel, so she's kind of in, uh, gotten into gospel. There's some gospel on here, but uh, plenty of secular music as well to enjoy. But uh, yes, I highly recommend this. If you love a good, uh, just a good, rich, lush vocalist, uh, uh, Liz Wright must be on your list. She's just fantastic. Now, here's another, uh, the only other female, <laughs> ladies first, the only other female act in this list of five. And this one kind of comes with a story also. Uh, they are The Secret Sisters is the name of the uh, group. And this is their album, Mind Man Medicine. This is their fifth album, I believe. And this one is on New West Records. And I had picked up I can't remember if I picked up their first or second album uh, first, but I uh, really enjoyed them. 
uh, picked up their third and fourth albums after a while, and then in a CD purge, I uh, got rid of those. Uh, but uh, when I found out that they had a new album out uh, this year, I decided to give it a try. Uh, enjoyed it so much, and actually, New West Records had a sale going on on their website at the time, uh, with and their third and fourth albums were on sale, so I decided to buy all three in one shot, and uh, I did not regret it. So yes, uh, they're, they're a great, uh, they have a bit of a country or Amer Americana sound to them, but their vocal harmonies, their voices blend together, well, they're sisters. I mean, their voices just blend together wonderfully. I mean, just if you love female vocal harmony, and you like um, some uh, Americana or slightly country, vaguely countryish vibes, I kind of think of these ladies as a female Everly Brothers. So, hey, if you like the Everly Brothers, check out The Secret Sisters. Fantastic. Um, I, oh, Space is the opening song. That's great. Uh, if the World Was a House, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, a song on here, All the Ways, features Ray, Ray LaMontagne as a guest artist. And, uh, yeah. Bear With Me is another song on here that's really good. So, there we go. And here's another artist that I uh, forgot about this guy's... Uh, I, I think I heard that he was putting out a new album, but I was kind of... You know, I was kind of met on his last album, uh, Zeros, a couple of years ago. So I just kind of skipped over this one until I happened to be in Barnes & Noble, and they were having a CD sale, and this was there, so I picked it up. It is Declan McKenna's latest album, What Happened to the Beach. Uh, yes, an interesting uh, interesting cover out there for there. And uh, yes, his sound has changed a little bit. Um, I got some Beck vibes with this one, especially Beck from his Odelay era. Some, some sampling, some kind of, what do you call it? A, I, I want to use the word clunky, but that's that has a negative connotation, and I don't intend a negative connotation by it. But you know, kind of, kind of, you know, that Beck, that kind of, you know, DIY lo-fi sort of sound. Uh, that's kind of the vibe that I got got off of here. Unusual sounds on this album. Uh, yes, perhaps his most his most different sounding album, definitely. But uh, it has been growing on me quite a bit, and I honestly couldn't pick. A favorite song at all on here. I'm this is this is one of those that I still have to listen to a couple more times before it really really um, assimilates into me. So, but yes, I do not regret having picked that up. I'm hearing some rustling outside the window. I don't know what's out there. Anyway, these next two, the, these last two on my list, these are probably tied for my favorite album so far of 2024. Here we have Conan Gray with his album. Uh, found heaven. This is just, this is like a love letter to the 80s. I mean, just all sorts of, uh, what isn't dancey upbeat synth pop is, you know, a perfect, you know, just perfectly crafted power ballads, power ballad, power ballad homages to the 80s. I mean, textbook power ballads on a couple of these songs. Uh, I mean, I keep saying power ballads like this is loaded. It's not loaded with power ballads, so no, don't get it, get, don't get that impression. But uh, there are a few, but most of it is upbeat, dancey kind of synth pop. It's excellent, excellent stuff. Um, definitely my favorite Conan Gray album so far. The lyrics are not as autobiographical, as personal as his previous two albums, so that might be a turnoff for some people. But I, I gravitate more toward the music, the instrumentation, more than the lyrics, so this album is kind of right up my alley. So very, very, very good album. And the last one on my list today is one that, uh, this is one of those artists, one of those bands that whenever they put, on, put out a new album, I'm going to get it. It is The Feeling with their latest album, San Vito. This is their sixth album, I believe, and their first one in two or three years. You might recall that their last album, which whose name escapes me right now, was my favorite album of the year back when it was released, 2021, I think. Might have been 2022. But yes, um, San Vito by The Feeling, is just a, uh, they're just kind of in top form, pretty much. Uh, I absolutely love this album. Uh, do I have favorite songs on here? Not sure. 
yeah, they're, they're all excellent. Oh, and another great, kind of like with uh, Liz Wright, my discovering that Angelique Kijo was on the Liz Wright's new album. Uh, Lucy Silvas is on a track on this album, which I didn't know until I picked it up. Yes, Lucy Silvas is a French, as suggested by her name, uh, French-British, I think, uh, artist, and she has done four or five albums. I actually uh, found out about her way back when, back when she first started. Uh, she gained a little bit of traction in the States a few years ago with some slightly more Americana-leaning albums, but... Um, I don't think they gained her the notoriety quite that she was hoping for or the, the success that she was hoping for, but still great albums. But yes, this uh, her being on this album is only a plus, in my opinion. But uh, yes, uh, Foul Weather Friend, that was an interesting song. Um, the War's Not Won, that's the opening track, that's great. Um, yeah. I couldn't tell you. I, I Yeah, just all the songs on here are just excellent, in my opinion. Uh, couldn't pick any favorites. So, but anyway, yes, that uh, that shows you the uh, a taste of my favorite albums from 2024, new releases, as well as some discoveries, uh, old and not so old, from years past that I happened upon this year. So, yes, 2024 has been great so far, and it's shaping up to be uh, just as good for the second half of the year. And, uh, yes, hopefully my next video, well... <clears throat> I actually plan on recording a second video today. Uh, I won't put out for a week, so uh, you'll see that video coming up in a week. Uh, it's a haul video, so uh, uh, look forward to that one. But uh, yes, and I do want to do another video. I will be gearing up to do another video some, sometime in the next few weeks. So yes, hopefully my content stream will be returning to closer to normal uh, than it has been these last uh, two months when you've only gotten two videos from me the last two months. But anyway, uh, to avoid this video getting any longer, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. Before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch my future videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.